The next property is flex flow, which is pretty straightforward. It is a shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap. By default, the flex flow property is set to row and no wrap, which is the default of the individual properties. So I can comment out these two properties and add the single flex flow property. Now the first value is the flex direction and the second value is the flex wrap. You can type any combination of the possible values and the layout will adjust accordingly. Let's go with flex flow set to row reverse and wrap. If I refresh the browser now, you can see that row reverse has applied. So item one is to the right and item nine is to the left. And if I start reducing the browser width, the items start to wrap. Item nine moves on to the next line, item eight, item seven, and so on. Similarly, let's try column reverse and wrap reverse. Let me also quickly set a height to the container. And if I refresh the browser, you can see how that is laid out in the browser. Item one at the bottom, so column reverse, and then wrap reverse. So the items are wrapped to the previous column. And that's it about flex flow. So the flex flow property is a shorthand for flex direction and flex wrap. The first value is the flex direction and the second value is the flex wrap. All possible combinations of the two properties work just fine.